Hello, welcome to the broadcast today. This is Roger and Cheryl coming to you with a heart full of love for you. And we just want to uh, invite you to be a part of what we're doing today. We come to you every week here uh, doing a Bible study, doing a, a, a Cheryl's a, a, a teacher, and you know, sometimes I put a little prophetic edge in with it or teach a little bit myself, whatever uh, God uh, leads us to do. But, um, you know, Cheryl, I watch you put uh, the effort in and all into preparing for the people, and our heart really is to touch the people and help the people. So I want to I, take, these, take these lessons seriously, because you can grow in the Lord. Uh, you know, we're in a day, a day whenever so many are saying there's such a division, there's a difference in the next generation, and we do see that. And uh, You know, our heart is to try to uh, make up that gap somehow, but the Word of God doesn't change generation to generation. I look at, read, read about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and how God moved uh, in each of their lives uh, in very similar ways. You know, they went through different experiences, but God moved in their lives in very, very different, uh, very similar ways. And, uh, you know, I see God moving. God's still a healer, and it's still because of the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed. He's still a Savior, and it's still because... Uh, he was the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. So I want to invite you to, to make him your Lord, make him your Savior. If you don't know him as Lord and Savior, uh, do that. There's just something in my heart that wants to reach out to this world today. And instead of just, uh, you know, cursing everything it's uh, doing, uh, let's just turn around and make it a, make our hearts toward God concerning our our fellow man concerning the world. Uh, you know, I remember uh, whenever Jesus was born, the angels, peace on earth, goodwill toward men. And I think that's still God's heart toward uh, the earth today. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So um, I just want to take just a moment to witness that to you and to tell you uh, he's still a savior. And as we pray today, as we open up and get, get our hearts and our spirits and minds ready, uh, I want you just to invite him into your heart, invite him to be uh, a part of your life, and you be a part of his. It's not like you're having to set it far off and watch what God's doing. Uh, you can come right up and, <laughs> you know, he, he's, uh, we call him Papa God in our house. He's Papa. He's our Father. Uh, so I uh, thank God that he's our Heavenly Father. Jesus paid the price for you. Uh, to have that kind of relationship with him. And, uh, so let's pray today, and I believe God's going to move for you. Uh, I sense somebody uh, is going through just a real uh, struggle in your day-to-day uh, -day walk. You know, it seems like everything, everywhere you turn, every every avenue you turn toward seems to be against you. Uh, but let me tell you something. No weapon formed against you will prosper. And you just keep walking by faith. You just keep walking uh, in the Spirit and watch what God does because God God will take you through it on the other side. I remember the three Hebrew uh, children. They were thrown into the fiery furnace, but they didn't even uh, suffer the smell of smoke, let alone the flames. So you just do it by faith, and as you do it by faith, then God goes with you. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus right now, as we agree together, God, we pray for the people that are listening today that don't know you, God, that they come, they open their hearts, they open their minds, and they accept you as Lord and Savior, God. I thank you for that. I thank you, God, for touching and healing today. I thank you, Father God, that you are uh, specifically, I'm, I'm, I'm sensing something in a, in a right big toe. There's something going on with somebody's right big toe that you need a touch from God, and uh, Father, in the name of Jesus, in fact, the feet, all the, the several people in their feet need a, need a touch today. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for feet, God, that you, uh, that you heal those uh, feet and uh, ingrown toenails, God, that you, uh, God, bring, bring the healing and, and cease the pain, Father. Uh, God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord. God, even beyond that, the bones in the feet, uh, God, begin to come back into place and God... Uh, the pain there, God, begin to subside and God be healed in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you for that. And God, I thank you, Lord, that you just...
Do a mighty work in the midst of your people today, God. I thank you, Lord, for being a witness today and demonstrating your power and your love toward us, God. Now as we go on and teach and talk more about faith, God, we thank you, Lord, that we don't want to just talk about it. We want to walk in it because it's now faith that's the substance of things that we've hoped for and the evidence of things that we've not seen. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen, sure. I just really feel a healing, um, anointing movement. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. We Amen, started sure. Lesson 6 talking about the, some of the false teachings that the church has perpetrated. And um, I think some of that has come from just not understanding maybe how to have faith or not just something, you know, because a walk of faith is not an easy walk. Um, it is a walk that you have to be determined to walk in. But you, we do have the power of the Holy Spirit to do it. But I just feel so impressed to say that um, whatever sickness, disease, problem that you're facing, Jesus Christ paid the price through his Amen. precious blood and his broken body for everything. One of the first scriptures we started out with in Lesson 6 is that Jesus went about healing one scripture said he laid his hands on all of the people yes, and healed them all. He hasn't changed from that. He still desires for us all to be healed and walk in health. Um, a couple of weeks ago I was reading in the scripture and reading about the paralytic man that um, the four friends brought to Jesus. and I was just so struck by it that here is this man who's been a paralytic. He's obviously a grown man because it took four men to carry him on this stretcher type thing. And they couldn't get to Jesus. Jesus was in a house. I don't know if it was his house. I don't recall right off. But he was teaching and yeah, all outside the house and in the house were just throngs of people listening to Jesus teach. And so these four men had a friend that they apparently deeply loved and cared about, but they couldn't get to Jesus. So they climbed up on the roof and tore away the roof. Now, probably the roofs back then may have been a straw or something that was probably not easy to tear away, but easier to tear away than a roof what we're used to today. And they let this man down in front of Jesus. And... Here's a man that had no use of his bones, yeah. his muscles, nothing, yeah. and apparently had never walked. Um, but Jesus said to him, your sins be forgiven. Now his four friends, it doesn't say their response to that, but they may have wondered, you know, why did he say that? Now the Pharisees and sat, the scribes and all them, they took offense at that, thinking in themselves, who are you to forgive sins? Only God can do that. And Jesus addressed that. But the point of what I'm saying here is, after Jesus said, your sins are forgiven you, he said, rise, take up your bed, and walk, or go home, go your way. And he did exactly that. And we talked in the last lesson about how important forgiveness is. Something in this man's life of unforgiveness was hindering him from being healed. Don't let that be your case. Amen. It's not worth it. There's nothing you can do about the situation, or if there is, it should have already been done. But you can forgive. Yes. It, you may not be able to change the situation, but you can change your heart towards Amen. the situation. Forgive and receive your own healing. Um, I distinctly feel that there is a woman who has a serious situation health-wise, and she's carrying unforgiveness from her childhood. Amen. 
let go of it. In Amen. the name of Jesus yes, Christ, Jesus. let go of it. You've asked the Lord for healing. You desire healing. You desire to be healthy. But you have to let go of that offense. Forgive. And forgive yourself for taking offense for all those years. And receive the healing of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're talking about now faith. Amen. You can receive that right now. Let Amen. go of it and receive your healing. In the name of Jesus. All right, Roger mentioned at the end of the last lesson about how Satan brings up our past and about forgiving ourselves and things like that. And it's just so necessary and so important. And God spoke to me. <coughs> Let me get a drink of water here. God spoke to me a couple days ago, and Roger referenced this, that the past is non-existence. Existent. The past is non-existent. And so I was pondering on that. And I realized that we are, if we are born again, we are a new creation. We live by the new creation man. Now we're maturing and growing in those er areas and coming to the finished faith that Jesus is working in us. But <clears throat> the truth is the past is non-existent for us in our new creation man. And according to the word of God, God, it doesn't exist in God's mind either because he said he cast our sins away as far as the east is from the west and into the sea of forgetfulness. And Paul wrote, forget the past and press on to what's ahead. Well, mistakes are always in the past. Sins, just outright sins. Whatever the mistake is or the misunderstanding, it's always in the past. Now, we are supposed to do our part to correct it as to what our part is. We can't necessarily help how the person responds to it, but if we need to ask forgiveness or if we owe someone something, money or some other thing that that was our agreement and we just didn't do it, we need to make those things right. Amen. But then we need to realize that we need to forgive ourselves for being in rebellion against the Word of God because that's what it is. When we don't make things right, and when we carry offenses and we carry unforgiveness, we're in rebellion against God and against his word. And those things have to be settled. If faith is going to work in our life, all that's got to be cleared out. But I want to say this, is that this is a major door open to Satan, to the enemy of our soul, when we harbor these mistakes and we dwell on things and we keep offense and we keep unforgiveness these things exist in our mind and that's where satan works that's exactly where he works and we looked at that in previous lessons so <clears throat> he is going to try to bring up the past over and over and over and over and he will you've probably already experienced I carried unforgiveness and worse in my heart for years towards someone. I mean, years, uh, terribly so. And over and over and over in my mind, I would go over the things this person had done to me, or I felt they had done to me, what I remembered being done to me. And all it did was ruin my life. I mean, it truly ruined my life because I was angry and bitter. And, um, you know, nobody wants to be around an angry and bitter person. They just, not unless you have an angry and bitter spirit, then you can bring the two together and chow over all the anger and bitter stuff. But it always leads to death. See, that kind of thing is of the realm of death. The kingdom of darkness, the realm of death. Life is what is in the kingdom of God, and you'll never have it by keeping that stuff active in your mind and your emotions and so forth. <clears throat> All right, so 
I thought this was interesting too. We need to forget our past, correct what we can correct, and then put it behind us as the Apostle Paul says. But I read this also that I thought was so interesting. We don't just forget the bad, we forget the good. Yeah. Because if we stay back there where it was just so good, then we miss moving forward into the good and better that God has for us now and in the future. So all of the past has to be forgotten. Now, there's nothing wrong with remembering good memories and things like that. That's a part of love and loving the person whose memory you're thinking about or whatever. But absolutely negative memories and thoughts that that produce, if it produces an emotion in you where you feel so angry again or so frustrated with that person, then something's wrong there. First of all, let me go over here to this scripture. Well, let's, let's start here. I'm going to kind of backtrack and then bring it together. All right, James 1, 6 through 8 says, but let a person ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wa wavereth is like a wave of the sea, wiven, driven by the wind and tossed about, just like this, up and down, up and down, just whichever way the wind is blowing, whichever way the emotions are going, whichever way the thoughts are going. Let not that person think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Now that's a pretty bold blatant statement. You, that's not faith. And so you're not going to get anything from the Lord when your life is driven like this, up and down. <clears throat> then it goes on to say that an, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Now think about that. Take a look at your life. Are you stable? Are things going along smoothly? Or is it one upheaval after the other after the other? You know, some people love to live in drama. Something going on all the time, not in a good way. And that is no way to live. That is a double-minded person. You're listening to all the thoughts from the enemy and maybe once in a while some of the things from God. There's turmoil inside. And that leads to an unstable life. <clears throat> All right, so here's the remedy for that. 2 Corinthians 10, 4, and 5 says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So here's what we do. First of all, you have to realize when you can't get the thoughts out of your mind about what somebody's done to you or even what you've done to somebody else, that is a stronghold yeah. that has to be broken by our weapons which are not carnal. First of all, you may need someone to help pray with you about that, that, that has faith and that believes the word of the Lord, that this thing can be broken out of your life. And then you have to exercise yourself to pay attention to what you're thinking. What's going on up here? What's going on in your emotions? Get a grip on it. I said it like this one time. <laughs> this is how I see it a lot. Being dressed in a cowgirl dress with fringe at the bottom and jacket with fringe on it, and my lasso in my hand, and my boots on, and every time there's a thought coming along that's not in line with the Word of God, I throw my lasso out and get it, and then I offer it up and say, take this thought, Jesus. I bring it captive to you. I do not want it. I will not entertain it, and that's the end of it. And so that's how I think about it, <laughs> but it works for me. I can tell you that. It works for me. But we're bringing every thought to the obedience of Christ. What is the problem here? The thoughts that we have that are not according to the Word of God and the, the love of God 
it is exalting itself against the knowledge of God. God knows about the situations. We don't always know. So anytime we're bombarded with those thoughts, big or little, it's exalting itself against what God already knows. So we need to bring those thoughts captive, get the Word of God in our mind. Um, if nothing else, just get the thought that Jesus Christ will take care of this. He has taken all my cares. Cast the cares on Him. Why? Because He cares for us. He's not going to leave us as orphans. He's not going to leave us without comfort. He's not going to leave us without help and strength. That's what Holy Spirit within us is for. To strengthen us in our inner man. To strengthen us in our soul. So that we can do this. Alright. Um, I want to wrap up one thing here. And then we'll let Roger say what he wants to say. But especially be aware of the fact of what thoughts are coming to you. Don't let Satan bring up your past. It is done and over with. If you've done everything that's normal and right to do, then it's over with for you. All right, Hebrews 11:6 says, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now, I want to point out something here. I may have said this on earlier lessons, but growing up as a child, hearing this scripture, it just came across in my child's mind that it's impossible to please God. But that's not the focus of this scripture. The point is not the impossibility of pleasing God, but that it requires faith to believe He exists. First of all, you can't see Him. You can't necessarily feel Him. And that this God that we can't see or feel desires to reward people who diligently seek Him. Now, how do we diligently seek Him? Well, we do that through the Holy Bible. We do that by going to church and being with other believers and hearing the word of God taught and preached to us and so forth that is founded and based on the scriptures with the correct understanding of the scriptures. These are the things that help to develop faith in us in Amen. the first place. All right? Now, if we don't have confidence in God's integrity, or if you have trouble thinking, well, he doesn't really exist, or he wouldn't let all these bad things go on in the earth. Well, the truth of the matter is, in Psalms 115, verse 16, it tells us that God, create, well, the scripture tells us God created the heavens and the earth. But in Psalms 115, 16, it says he gave earth into the hands of the children of men. And you can find all that written about in Genesis chapter 1 and on through the Bible. All right, so anyhow, we um, have to have confidence in God's integrity because if we don't, um, it's impossible for us to please him because we're unable to please him because we don't even believe he exists. All right, so we doubt his character and his intentions and things like that. So we have to get rid of that stuff if we're going to receive something from God by faith. Amen. Now, the phrase, to please, and it's impossible to please, stems from a word meaning to be fully agreeable. And we can only be fully agreeable to what God has said First of all, if we diligently seek him and begin to understand his character, begin to understand his thoughts and his true intentions towards the human race. And that comes through his word. And when we read his word, we believe what he has to say. God tells us in the Bible what kind of character he has in several places. That might surprise you, but it's in there, and it will help you to go and read that. All right, we have to believe that he meant what he said in the Holy Scriptures, and he has the power to fulfill his word. 
Roger has mentioned several times through these last few lessons that faith works by love. And 1 John 4, 16 tells us, And we have known and believed the love that God has to us. God is love. When we come to that point and we really know and we really believe that God loves us, say it this way, God loves me. God say loves that me. to yourself. God loves me. 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 Amen. And when we can get to that place, we're going to find things begin to open up for us. We will be able to exercise faith, and we'll start to love other people. I'm going to let Roger finish up today. <clears throat> Cheryl, I, I was just uh, thinking about faith and <clears throat> how many times you may be listening to this program, but your, your life's going through a storm. I was thinking about <clears throat> Jesus in the back of the boat asleep, but yet the disciples were experiencing a storm on the Sea of Galilee. And <clears throat> they, uh, they began to watch all the waves that were beating against the boat. They began to watch all the things that were trying to challenge their faith. And you know, they, they, uh, what happened when they were doing that in their faith, their fear was greater than their faith at that moment. They began to question Jesus. They began to question uh, his concern for them. Uh, they began to question, uh, you know, uh, what was going on in his mind because they woke him up and said, Master, don't you care that we perish? Don't, we, don't you care about this storm and the things around me? You may be sitting there thinking, well, it's easy for them to teach faith. They're <laughs> preachers or whatever. Uh, but you know, no. <laughs> when that, whenever faith starts working in your life, it's going to be tested. And that doesn't mean we yield to it. And that doesn't, you know, we have to constantly keep in our in our spirit and in our awareness uh, that there's no situation that God has not already provided an answer for, that faith will not uh, stop. And whenever Jesus woke up, he asked them, how is it that you had no faith? Mm -hmm. He began to redirect their, their thoughts to them and saying, as, how is it that you had no faith? They... That was a good question because uh, <clears throat> you may be saying, well, I had faith and God, God still didn't come through. I had faith that somebody would, uh, you know, some situation would change and God didn't come through. Well, uh, you know, maybe we need to look and say, okay, how do I increase my faith? Uh, I increase my faith by changing my thinking. There's a Repentance thing again, changing our thoughts and beginning to let our thoughts line up with his thoughts. Cheryl said, I think it was in the last lesson, or, that, uh, that, uh, that sickness is never the will of God, that uh, those things are never the will of God. But, but somewhere religion planted a seed in there, uh, a seed that, well, if it's the will of God or there's, uh, God sends those things on us to... Uh, teach us or whatever. But that's, sickness is never the will of God. God created all things, but he did not create sickness uh, to train us and teach us. He, create, he sent the Holy Ghost to lead us and guide us into all truth. So I said all that to say this, that right now, quit looking at the storm. Quit looking at all those things around you and begin to get a hold of God. Let's pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we rebuke the storm. God, we thank you, Lord, just as, as you did. We stand up and say, uh, say, peace be still in every storm, in every heart, in every life, right now, in the name of Jesus. Now, I challenge you uh, right now that you stand up in that, that you say, I'm not letting this storm and what I see sway me from the faith that is working in my heart. There's greater things yet to come, and I'm going to stand in it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I want to invite you to join with us. Stand with us in your offerings. We've got mission trips coming up. Uh, we're, we're traveling. We've got a lot, a lot of traveling we're doing right now at this time. And if you will, stand with us. Uh, 
invest in the in the ministry. When we go, you go. When we win souls, you win souls. When we lay hands on the sick and they recover, you get the same reward. And I, if you'll stand with us, become a partner with us. Uh, we love you. We bless you. And we ask you now that you just um, stand with us. We love you. Pray for us. And uh, the, the address will come on the screen. And our PayPal account is on the uh, Facebook page. We love you. And we'll talk to you later.